welcome to Wacky Day. Ta-da! It's Wacky Day, and I've got my socks on my hands, and I got my hat and my apron, and I got my little Miss Trenshine. All right, guys, are we ready to finish the story? Oh my goodness, I can't believe it's almost time to finish the story. Last we left off, the kids were about to reveal who was messing with Auntie A. Let's find out what happened. Okay, now you have to give me a little bit of grace here, guys. I got socks on my fingers, so sometimes it's a little hard to turn pages. But here we go. Chapter 13. There we go, little Miss Sunshine. Okay. Kenny and Hannah, Dink said. What? Wallace cried. Explain, please, Auntie A said. Well, you've been getting those, those postcards, Dink started. He pulled the la latest one from his pocket and laid it on the table. And calls from someone else wanting to buy your house. You didn't answer them, so I think they're trying a new plan. They're hoping to scare you into leaving. Dink told, see, there you go. Dink told them that he thought the snake didn't just wander into the bunkhouse. Someone put it there, Ruth Rose said. They came in while we were asleep and left the snake on the floor. I think Kenny and Hannah did it, Dink said. They know you're afraid of snakes. Auntie A smiled. A lot of people know that, she said. Why do you think it's Kenny and Hannah? They use a really smelly mosquito repellent, and I smelled it last night in the bunkhouse, Dink said. I think Hannah wrote the postcards and put them in your mailbox. There was a note from H on your fridge. I checked the postcard you got yesterday, and the handwriting is the same. I think it's Hannah's. At first, I thought the note might be from Howie because of the H, but no, only Hannah leaves notes on my fridge, Auntie A said. Go on, please. Hannah probably called Dr. Perdue, Dink continued. Kenny is studying botany, so I'll bet he knows that algae can be turned into biofuel. I think Hannah asked Dr. Perdue to come and take samples. He must have told her and Kenny this land could be valuable, so they're trying to get it away from me. Then they'll sell it and make a lot of money. I'll bet they bought, brought Dr. Perdue to the pond on Hannah's motor scooter, Ruth Rose said. Alice closed her eyes for a moment. What about the mountain lion in my driveway, she said. Was that part of the plan to scare me into selling? I don't think there ever was a mountain lion in the driveway, Dink said. Howie was there and he didn't see it. But I saw the picture on Kenny's phone, Alice said. Easy to fake, Josh said. Wallace, do you have the video of us up in the space simulator? Wallace pulled out her phone and found the video and pushed the start button. They all looked at the space simulator sailing in the heavens. See how it looks like we're traveling through a real sky, Josh asked. But the sky isn't real. It's just stars painted on the ceiling and walls. They're sort of, that's sort of how Kenny made it look like there was a mountain lion near your house. There's a picture of them looking at the phone video. Everyone stared at Josh waiting. Josh blushed pink. I think Kenny took a picture of your driveway, he said. Then he downloaded a picture of a mountain lion from the internet. He put the two pictures together to make it look like the mountain lion was lying in your driveway, but it wasn't. That's right, Dink said. Your car and Howie's van were both in the driveway yesterday morning. Howie said he watched them before lunch. If Kenny had taken that picture yesterday, the cars would have been in the picture too, but they weren't. And that means Kenny took the picture some other time. Hannah would know how to fake the pictures, Ruth Rose said. She's studying to become, to become a movie producer. Now, no one spoke for a minute. So Kenny did, did that to scare me, Auntie A said. And I wouldn't be surprised if Hannah lied about seeing a rattlesnake under the picnic table, Ruth Rose said. For the same reason, everyone looked at Auntie A. All this so they could get me to sell them my property, she said, which they would sell to the U.S. government for a lot more money, Walker said. It does look like Kenny and Hannah are trying to scam you, Auntie. But they're both just students, Alice said. They have no money to buy this property. But maybe M.K. does, Dink said. He tapped the postcard on the table. I'm sorry, Auntie, he said. Who is M.K.? You were supposed to call M.K. if you wanted to sell, Dink said. Hannah wrote the postcards and put down the initials and phone number. 
Could MK be Hannah or Kenny? Wallace asked. She opened her phone. There's one way to find out. She tapped in the number, put the phone on speaker, and handed it to her aunt. Let's see who answers. Everyone heard a man's voice say, Christmas Savings Bank, Mark Keene's office, how may I help you? Auntie eyes grew really wide. Mr. Keene's, she said after a few seconds, this is Alice Wallace speaking. I think you are interested in my property on Palm Lane. Why, yes, Miss Wallace, the man said. I have a bank customer who loves your property. They are ready to pay all cash, and my bank is prepared to make the loan. Can we sit down together to discuss the details? Say no, Wallace whispered. I have relatives visiting from out of town, Alice said into the phone, but I'll call you soon to make a date. Mr. Keynes agreed, and the call ended. So the mysterious M.K. is Mark Keynes, who works in a bank, Walker said. But how does he know about this property? Auntie A handed the phone to Wallace. It's not a mystery, she said. Kenny's last name is Keynes. Oh. Chapter 14. Mark Keynes is Kenny's uncle, Dink said. Kenny told us he was late picking us up yesterday because he had to bring something to his uncle at the bank. It all fits together, Ruth Rose said. Kenny must have told his uncle about how scientists want to turn algae into fuel. They got Dr. Pardue to come out for a look, and then they made a plan to cheat you, Auntie A. I can't believe Kenny and Hannah did this, Auntie A said. I thought they were friends. I thought they were my friends. I even invited them for a piece of my birthday cake later. Perfect, Walker said. We'll have a nice chat with those two. Wallace laughed. I guess I'd better get busy baking, she said. The picnic table was crowded when Wallace carried out the cake. Alice had also invited Howie and his wife Dot with Seth and Natty. Bear lay under the table waiting for cake crumbs. Hannah and Kenny showed up last, riding on the motor scooter. They parked the bike and quickly sprayed each other with mosquito repellent. Hannah dropped the can in her book bag and they came across the lawn. When they reached the table, Dink sniffed the air. It was definitely the same stuff he'd smelled in the bunkhouse last night. When everyone was seated, Alice said, Kenny, why don't you call your Uncle Mark? Do you think he'd like some of my cake as well as my property? My uncle, he said. How, how do you know about my uncle? Alice tapped the postcard on the table. We know a lot, she said. Like how you and Hannah and your uncle tried to get my land from me? How Hannah lied about seeing a rattlesnake under the table yesterday? And how we know about the mountain lion, Wallace added. Or should I say, fake mountain lion? Kenny and Hannah looked at each other. Both had turned red. Alice placed two slices of cake on a paper plate. Take these and leave my property, she said. Enjoy the cake. I'll escort you, Walker said. He stood behind Hannah's seat. Me too, Howie said, joining Walker. Dink whispered something to Howie. Oh, and we won't report you to the police if you return the diary and Mr. Wallace's papers, Howie added. He and Walker followed Kenny and Hannah to the motor scooter. Dink watched Hannah unlock the small compartment and pull out a thin book and a file folder. She handed them to Walker, then climbed onto her scooter with Kenny on the rear seat. They left their slices of cake on the driveway and sped away. After Howie and his family had gone, Dink, Josh, Ruth Rose, and Wallace sat at the picnic table. They could hear Walker and Alice laughing through the kitchen window. My aunt wanted me to tell you that she can visit that you can visit her whenever you want, Wallace said, and she'll bake you cookies forever. Awesome, Josh said, but I ate too much cake and my stomach hurts. Ruth Rose giggled. Now you know why you are the Red Gobbler, she said. Dink gazed up at the moon. I see Blinky, he said. Oh, I've forgotten about Blinky with all the other excitement, Wallace said. He's still up there on the moon. I figured out a way to bring him back to Earth, Dink said. Tell me, Wallace said. Come on, guys. What if there was a, po a podcast for people who own cats, Dink said. You could call it Cat Chat. In the story, the astronaut who lost Blinky could ask all the cat owners to send $1 each to NASA. 
it would get millions of dollars and use the money to send Blinky's owner to the moon. He'd get Blinky and bring him back home. Josh started laughing. Cat chat, he said. Well, I like the idea, Ruth Rose said. It would be a happy ending. I think it's brilliant, Wallace said. I'm going to work that into the story. I'll put a note in the book telling my readers how Dink Duncan came up with the idea. Dinky saves Blinky, Josh said. He gave Dink a poke. Ruth Rose rolled her eyes and Dink grinned. The end. That was kind of fun. I like doing that, guys. That was fun. All right. So that was our story, Space Shuttle Scam, from the A to Z Mysteries. If you're interested, there's a whole bunch of these stories out there that you can read if you like mysteries. Um, I was thinking of maybe doing another book if you guys want. Uh, give me a text or text your, I'm sorry, email your teacher and let me know if you want me to do another story. And if you have any suggestions on the kind of story. Not necessarily the exact story because I'm kind of limited to what's in my house. But if you give me an idea of a story that you might want to hear, the type of story you might want me to read, I'll see if I can find it. All right, guys? Have a great Wacky Wednesday. And I will see you next story we have. Bye.